Epilogue. You know, a party's just not a party without you, AJ said, sliding up behind Eve as she stood on Jeff and Lisa's back porch, listening to the New Year's revelers celebrate inside. He looked down at the drink in her hand that she hadn't so much as sipped. See, I told you we should have brought something decent. She looked down at the drink and then turned slightly to look at him. Have you ever been so happy that you're afraid it can't last? What kind of question is that? he asked, lowering his eyebrows with concern. It's just, Lisa told me they're expecting again. Again? AJ backed up in astonishment. Wow, they don't waste any time, do they? And Gabe and Ashley seem so happy, and you and I are great. Thank you so much, he said smugly. She reached up and hit him softly. No, it's just that, I look around and wonder how much longer it can all last. I mean, how long before everything changes again? The laughter fell from his face as he wrapped his arms around her. You know change isn't always bad. If it was, I wouldn't have stood up there and took those vows. But she didn't laugh at his joke. Gently, he turned her around and took her in his arms. You know, sometimes when life turns a page... It can actually be for the better. Liking the warmth of him, she snuggled closer. Like you and me? Yeah, like you and me. He held her there for a moment. Think about it. To get to this page, we had to read all the other ones. But that doesn't mean the next one won't be just as good. Or better. His lips brushed across her hair. Just think. What if you'd have been afraid of getting here last year? I was, she said softly. And look how great it turned out, he said. Man, I wouldn't have missed this for the world. The thoughts ran through her, and then she looked up at him. It might be better. He smiled. You never know. With that, he pulled her to him, and her soul wrapped around that idea. After another beat, he kissed the top of her head. Now, what do you say we go back in there, throw some confetti in the air, and then go home? Home, but it's early, she said with some doubt about his sanity. You never leave a party early. Well, maybe we can go make our own little party and give Lisa and Jeff a run for their money. She laughed softly at that. They're already one ahead of us. Well, then we'd better get cracking, woman. She shook her head and laughed again. If I didn't know better, I'd think you were trying to seduce me. He kissed her gently as she swayed in his arms. If I didn't know better, I'd think I already had. You've got a point there. Despite the smile, she kissed him back. Nodding and smiling for all the stars to see, AJ lowered his lips to hers, just trying to keep up. Is that a challenge? she asked, looking into the soul of the man she wanted by her side now and always as he backed up enough to gaze at her. It's whatever you want it to be. Okay, then let's go throw some confetti already. She grabbed her drink from the railing and tossed it out onto the lawn. Then, arm in arm, they stepped back into the light of the house as fate lifted and then turned the page. This has been White Knight, Book Two, The Courage Series, written by Stacey Stallings, narrated by Becky Dowdy. Copyright 2012 by Stacy Stallings. Production copyright 2014 by Stacy Stallings. Never miss a second of the story. Like and subscribe to the Stacy Stallings YouTube channel today. In truth, what he most wanted was to make a clean getaway, but he couldn't be rude to Eve, even if he wanted to ditch everyone else. It was at the very end of the hall, right at the cusp of the bathroom threshold, that he heard the voices. He would have dismissed them, except the mention of her name yanked his full attention that direction. I don't care if Melody did bring him. I don't want that jerk in my house. A.J. paced across the small opening of the door beyond, and Blaine cowered into the darkened bathroom instinctively. They couldn't see him. He hadn't turned on the light, and the hallway was dark. But still, he didn't think eavesdropping out in the open was the best way to make a great impression either. 
She's a big girl, Eve said, moving so that her silhouette was visible, outlined by the soft lights of the master bedroom. What's so bad about him anyway? He about killed her once. I'm not going to stand around and watch him do it again. Blaine sensed movement toward the door, and he ducked into the bathroom just as the door down the hall swung open. Flattening against the bathroom wall, he left the door open enough to be able to hear. AJ plowed down the hallway with Eve right behind him. They stopped on the other side of the bathroom threshold. AJ, come on. Tonight was supposed to be special. She stopped him by grabbing his elbow and swinging him around. Lisa and Jeff knocked themselves out to make this nice for us. Please, please don't ruin it. The pleading in Eve's voice was so desperate, it wafted over Blaine's heart as well. Please. She moved toward AJ, and Blaine let his gaze fall to the darkness. It was such a private moment between the two of them. How could he not? I know you think the world of Melody, and I love you for that. I know you want to protect her, but please don't cause a scene tonight. Tomorrow you can call her and let her know how you feel. What? Am I supposed to just let him have a wide-open shot at her tonight? Eve backed up from the intensity of his voice. Maybe, maybe we could, I don't know, do something so she doesn't go home with Bobby, but with someone else. Like who? Except for Dante, who's like 12 years older than her. Maybe Blaine. He's here too. A huge whoosh of air went into Blaine's lungs and clung there. Blaine? Spoiled little rich jerk Blaine? Oh, yeah, like that's an improvement. Eve softened. She really was trying. Come on, AJ. Blaine's a nice guy. You should give him a chance. It was like forever passed before either of them spoke again. There wasn't a fiber of Blaine that had moved, and his muscles had begun to atrophy. Yet, how could he move? Not only would they know he had heard everything, AJ's already dim view of him would surely be set in concrete from then on. Fine, AJ spat. Fine, I won't say anything tonight. I'll call her tomorrow. The breath Eve breathed, coupled with the soft kiss she put on AJ's cheek, about did Blaine in. AJ Knight didn't deserve her. He wondered at that moment if any man did. With that, they moved on down the hall. Long after they were gone, quietly, slowly, Blaine closed the door and counted to seventy before he turned on the light. When he did, the first thing he saw was his reflection in the mirror over the double sinks. He wanted A.J. not to be right. He would have fought it with his fists had he had the chance. But looking into his own eyes, what did he really see? A guy who was living a flagrant lie and flaunting a life he could only dream of living. With a shake of his head, he dropped his gaze and gave up trying to figure it out. There was no answer. Not a good one, anyway. So it was better to forget it and move on. Oh, come on, loosen up a little, Bobby said, holding the glass of Coke mixed generously with whiskey out to Melody. It's not going to kill you. You haven't even had one all night. I really... Melody suspected it would taste as awful as it looked. However, he was standing there holding it, and making a scene wasn't her idea of smart. Okay, thanks, she said with a forced smile. To being back. Bobby held up his glass, and Melody clinked it, although they were both, in fact, plastic. They both took a long drink. The foul-tasting concoction burned all the way down Melody's throat. Ha! Huh, she let out a breath of disgust. It was the worst thing she'd ever tasted. Melody, the co-owner of the new house said happily. You don't want to miss what comes next. Like and subscribe to the Stacy Stallings YouTube channel so you never miss a second of the story.